Hello guys, today we are going to learn how to calculate and apply wind forces in ETAPS. When we talk about force acting on structure and compared to dead load, live load, earthquake, wind forces are the most complex and difficult to be calculated for a structure. Putting a fluid flow problem into a single formula is very difficult. Still this field is like perform practical test and get results from it. And for manual calculations, we have to rely on several experimental parameters to come up to a solution. So later on in this lecture, you will see that we will require a lot of parameters and factors like K1, K2, K3, K4, KD, KA, KC to describe and calculate wind forces on our building. As wind flow is a very complex phenomenon that depends on so many factors, so it is always said that you will get true response of a structure only in a controlled experimental flow system known as wind tunnel. Fluid flow studies are highly dependent on experimental results. Here we first perform the test then correlate the results to come up to a formula. The wind forces vary from terrain to terrain, height to height, building shape by shape, wind pressure, temperature, gustiness and many more. So for calculating wind forces on high rise building having height greater than or equal to 50 meter we should always go with wind tunnel test in order to know the true response of a building under wind forces. We will talk about wind tunnel test much more in depth and how much it cost and where we can perform it in India and much more in our upcoming lectures. We will also perform a computerized wind flow analysis known as CFD analysis of this building to know how wind is flowing around this building, worst direction of wind hit, what faces are under positive pressure, surface that are under suction, pressure coefficients on building surface, overall force and torsion experienced by this building. Now if you want to learn advanced dynamic analysis of a building, then we have a right course for you. I have made a complete advanced ETEPS, RCDC and SAFE building design course, in which you will be learning how to calculate dynamic analysis loads like response spectrum, time history, how to calculate static wind force and dynamic wind force through gust factor method. All these excel sheets will also be provided in this course. A very advanced method of wind analysis through CFD method is also included in this course. Complete in-depth RCDC software is also included which has design and detailing of beams, columns, slabs, staircase and water tank lectures in it. Foundation design through SAFE software is also included. So this one advanced course will make you pro in structural design and you can start taking large scale projects on your own. For the interested one, I have included the link in the description below. Much more on this advanced topic later on. Coming back, as our building is not a high rise building that is below 50 meter, so we can try to calculate the wind forces through static or dynamic formulas given in IS code. The code that we follow for wind calculation is IS-875 Part 3 2015. This code is very well written for static and dynamic wind force calculations for simple regular structures. Majority of formulas, tables, graphs are for rectangular shape building as there is no other option. So we will consider our building to be rectangular in shape. Yes, this will give us conservative results but we do not have any other option in order to calculate forces manually. For wind force calculation, we will highly depend on this IS code. Let's start our wind force analysis journey. First, we have to determine whether to do static or dynamic analysis for this building. So let's refer to the section 9, dynamic effects, page 45, where the first point states that if the ratio of the building height to its least lateral dimension is greater than 5, then we have to go with dynamic analysis. Let's check our building height, go to edit menu, then edit story and get systems. Then click on modify story data. Water tank top level height is 46.296 meter. As we know that wind force is a surface dependent phenomena and earthquake force is a mass dependent phenomenon. So the exposed surface will only be contributing to the wind forces. So we will be deleting this plinth height from the total height as this will be buried under the ground and will not be contributing to the overall forces. Subtract 2.1336 from 46.296 resulting in 44.1624 meter. Close the window. Now the least lateral dimension of our building is in the y direction, which when measured from the dimension tool comes out to be 32.6 meter. Let's enter these value 
into our actual sheet. Here enter 44.1624 in height cell and 32.6 meter in LY cell. We got a ratio of 1.35 which is way less than 5. So our building passed the height to least lateral dimension check. Let's see the other check which has some interesting information in it as well. Structure having first mode natural frequency less than 1 will be considered for dynamic analysis. Now a question might arise that why we are concerned about frequency less than 1, why not greater than 1? This is because the dynamic forces exerted by wind usually lies under 1 hertz frequency range. So any structure having first mode frequency less than 1 can undergo resonance with wind forces and create larger dynamic forces. So it becomes important to consider the dynamic effect on buildings when a structure have first mode frequency less than 1. From the graph you can see as the taller buildings have higher time period means less frequency so they will always be more affected by wind rather than earthquake and low rise building has less time period so large frequency so it will be more affected by earthquake rather than wind forces. So let's check if this case is applicable to our building or not. Open the analysis table, then structure output, then model information, then open model periods and frequencies. As you can see, our all first three modes are under 1 hertz frequency. So this building should be designed for dynamic forces. But here the answer will be no. This is where the most of the design engineers does the mistake. Now as we know that we haven't modeled the walls physically in e tabs, so we have ignored the structural strength of it, which will result in a wrong time period calculation by model analysis in e tabs. So unfortunately, we cannot rely on e tabs time period. We will calculate of our own through IS code help. Look for notes and point B, which states that the time period of all the other buildings T is equal to 0.09 into H divided by square root of D. Here D is the length along the direction of the wind. So we have to calculate time period both in X and Y direction. Back to actual sheet. Here you can see by entering LX and LY with building height, we have calculated the time period in X and Y direction. Hence the frequencies as well. As our frequencies came out to be greater than 1, so we do not have to worry about dynamic forces that is across wind forces on our building. You can use this actual sheet to quickly find out if your building project Structural model will exhibit dynamic behavior under the wind or not. Just enter the length, breadth and height in yellow boxes and the rest will be calculated automatically. So now let's start the static wind force calculation on our building. The wind force formulas, its many variables and calculation can be very overwhelming for a new or intermediate student. So I will summarize the static wind force calculation process in simple four formulas. Once you understand the functioning of these four formulas, then the rest of the wind force calculation will become very easy. The calculation flows like this. From the basic wind speed, we calculate the design wind speed. This design wind speed is then put into pressure formula. This pressure is then put into above formula to get design pressure PDZ, specific to building type and shape. Through this pressure, we get final force on the building at each floor level. So the flowing wind with speed V creates pressure. Then this pressure when applied on building produces forces on the wall or the facade of the building. Now let's start calculating the values starting from VB and then slowly proceeding towards pressure and then force formula. Talking of wind speed, the research team has gathered the wind speed data for past 50 years and has prepared a wind hazard map for India. You can find it in IS 875 part 3 figure 1 page 6. They have divided India in 6 basic wind speed sections. Where the east coastal area of India experience heavy wind speed due to its location and topography. Whereas west of India receive less wind speed, so making a high rise in Mumbai and Bangalore is more economical rather than constructing it in Mizoram or Leh Ladakh. Now this basic wind speed is based on maximum value of peak gust velocity averaged over a 3 second interval time that occurred in the last 50 years. Here keep in mind that wind never keeps on flowing with this peak gust velocity in an area. Gust is only a small interval high speed wind activity that we take only for design purposes. So when you look at wind data for any location like Jaipur, you will see first the average wind speed velocity in that area and the other one will be the max gust velocity that area received for small duration of time. 
So for static wind force calculation, we take this gust velocity recorded at 10 meter height recorded through anemometer into account. We consider the worst case for designing structures, so hence the gust wind speed is taken into account.